Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa na'udhu billahi min shuru'i anfusina wa min sayyati amalina Man yahdihillahu falamudillala Wa man yu'lil falahadiyala Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la shibika la وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى وخير هدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We seek His help. We seek His assistance. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within our own selves and the bad consequences of all of our deeds. Whoever Allah tabarakuhu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path, none will be able to lead him astray. Whoever Allah tabarakuhu wa ta'ala leaves to be astray, then none will find a guide for himself after that except by the permission of Allah tabarakuhu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no deity that has the right to be worshipped in truth. Other than Allah, He is alone without any partners, any association or likeness to His creation. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is His Prophet and His Messenger. All you who believe, as Allah has mentioned in the Quran, fear Allah as He ought to be feared, meaning do what's right by the rules and regulations of Allah. Obey Allah as best you're able. Stay away from disobedience to Allah and don't die except as those who are Muslims. All you who believe, <coughs> fear your Lord who's created you all from a single soul. That single soul is Adam and from that single soul created his mate and from that mate, meaning his wife, came countless many men and women and fear that same Lord who has demanded that you keep your rights between your kith and kin. Don't cut off the relationship with the kith and kin, the relatives, the close and the far, for indeed Allah is a watcher over you. All you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is right. Say that which is right in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will <coughs> correct for you your affairs, forgive you for your sins, and whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses in that regard to say that which is right, doing what is right, being the result of that, that the person's affairs will be corrected by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them for their sins. Then that is the greatest thing to achieve in this life. That is the ultimate achievement. To proceed, verily the most truthful speech. The most truthful words, the most truthful narration, the most truthful narratives or the narratives, the speech and the sayings that come from the Quran, which the Quran is the speech of Allah. There's nothing more truthful in speech than the Quran because it is the speech of Allah and the finest way, the finest guidance is the guidance of our noble prophet وسلم, for all of mankind and for every time and place for verily from the worst affairs that can be done by an individual is to invent, add to the religion that which the Prophet did not bring, that which Allah did not send down as a way 
and the Islam for every newly invented matter is considered to be what's bid'ah, innovation, and every innovation is a stray error and misguidance, and every misguidance leads to the hellfire. Today we want to talk about, as we had began to talk last sermon, last khutbah, about continuing after Ramadan. We talked about the blessings and some of the lessons in Ramadan that we should take after Ramadan to continue on our journey. As every individual, every male, female, every young, every old, every black, white, red, Arab, non-Arab, every individual is on a journey. Whether you like it or not, every individual is on a journey. Every individual is traveling through time on his way, his soul and his deeds back to where he came from in the beginning to Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala. Allah, the Most High, created you, created all that exists. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Kullu nafsin da'ikatul mawt Every soul will taste death. Allah has mentioned this in many places in the Quran. Then after you taste death, what happens? Allah mentions ثُمَّ إِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Then you will be brought back to me, meaning for the recompense, the judgment, the evaluation of deeds and dealings in this life. So everyone in that regard is on a journey. And we say often Naam in the Khutbah. Naam in Arabic means certainly. Naam, certainly, indeed. Everyone is on a journey. Back to his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this journey, when we talk about making the journey, we have to reflect on Ramadan. As the Ramadan in itself is an instruction manual how a person should be in his journey. And from amongst the jewels, the very essence, as they say, pearls and coils of Ramadan is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. The guidance that we take for granted, no one can be without their guidance. And there are different levels and different types of guidance that Allah out of his mercy has sent and we want to take a look at those different types of guidance just a glimpse and see where we fit with regards to their guidance and hopes that we may be able to stay on the journey with the correct destination the, the, the correct departure meaning when our souls leave and we return back in front of Allah, which starts in the grave for judgment that we will be, insha'Allah, from those who had a successful, a good journey. Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala, as we start with the prophets and messengers, <coughs> Allah has mentioned them. And they are the most guided. In being the most great, a'zama khalq, ba'd al-mala'ika, wa hum al-anbiya wa al يَحْتَجُونَ لِحَدِ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ While the angels are greater than the prophets and messengers for the fact that they don't disobey Allah, they're always in submission to Allah. The prophets and messengers being the second greatest from the creation of Allah wa Taala that worships Allah, they themselves still or in need of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, he mentioned the likes of them in the Quran when he said, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد بأثنا ولقد بأثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبد الله واجتنب الطاغوت And indeed we have sent 
for every nation, messengers, informing and proclaiming to their people, worship Allah alone, obey Allah as he has to be obeyed and should be obeyed, stay away from the prohibited things, don't worship anything except Allah and avoid the false deities. This is one of the types of huda, guidance that Allah gave to the prophets and messengers. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet, he mentioned that the greatest trial and tribulation is for the prophets. The prophets, they have the greatest tests. Why? Because Allah has given them the most complete of guidance. They have no doubt in the affair when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to them the revelation. Part of being a prophet and a messenger is that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala anba'ah ha'ulai min indihi subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah actually informs them either directly from himself or by way of angels or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to them in a dream. And this type of guidance is the first type of guidance that we want to talk about, that guidance of the prophets and messengers. Then Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala likewise he has mentioned in the story of Musa alayhi salam with dealing with one of the most treacherous and the most evil, wicked of mankind to ever live. They call him Ramses, Ramses the second. وَإِسْمُهُ بِوَصْفٍ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فِرْعَوْنِ And Allah has gave him a name as a description in Arabic Fir'aun, which Fir'aun in English we say Pharaoh, it means the most treacherous of tyrants. Meaning he has no limits, no borders, and he's playing for total keeps, even to the point that he will plot against his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Fir'aun, who the people were in great fear of, Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala told Musa after making his brother Harun a minister, and we don't mean minister like in the church, or minister like is with the nation of Islam. Minister here, yani waziran lahu, yani sahib lahu, aw annuhu yusa'idahu. That he accompanies him or that he aids him, he goes with him to help him in his mission. So Allah made Harun, as they say in English, Aaron, along with Musa, Moses, prophet. To go to Fir'aun, the tyrant. And Allah guided them in the affair as it was a great task and that which made them tremble. Thus Allah wa ta'ala gave them guidance and comfort when he said, Ithaba ila Fir'aun fa innahu tagha fa kullahu qawlan laynan la'allahu yatadakkar aw yaqsha. And both of you two, not one of you, but both of you, Musa and your brother, Harun, Aaron, both of y'all go to Fir'aun together. For verily, he has transgressed all of the limits. Go to him with a word of gentleness. Go to him with a word of advice in a gentle way that perhaps... He may become God-fearing or he may be of one who is reminded. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again giving guidance, showing the guidance to the prophets and messengers is from one of the greatest types of guidance that even them and their greatness they can't go 
without this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned for the general creation, such as in Surah Tabalat, the Surah of the Towns, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأن تهل بهذا بلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد يحسب أن لن يقدر عليه أحد يكون أقلبت مالا لبدا يحسب أن لم يره أحد لم نجأل لهم عينين And have we not after Allah swore by the sacred town in the city meaning Mecca and swore by the parent and the son of that sacred city. Then Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala went down and said, Alam na ja'al lahu aynain. Have we not made for the human being two eyes? Two eyes that he sees with. Two eyes that he may be strengthened. And that which he sees fortifying that which he hears. Have we not made him two eyes? As the Prophet said, Laysa qabrun kil ma'ayin. What you see is not like what you hear. Meaning you hear something that's true, then you see it, it confirms. And it reassures you of what you heard. Allah says, Alam najallahu aynayn. Have we not made for him two eyes, the human being? And have we not made for him a tongue and two lips? And this is the point, guidance. And we have guided him to two paths. But it's up to him to take that path in the end. The path of guidance, righteousness, and that which will help a person in times and places of confusion. And that which is that of the wrong path. That you may be warned not to go down that path. That you may be warned that that is the path to destruction. Ultimately, the ultimate punishment with Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala and Nara Jaheem, which is the blazing fire, and we ask Allah to save us from the blazing fire. And then you have Mubarakallahu Fikum, the general guidance that we just mentioned includes a type of guidance that's for all of the creation. All of the creation. Muslim al Kafiran, whether they submit or not, Allah gives their guidance to them and then they choose. Then Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala has a special guidance that he gives for the one who believes in him. The one that has submitted himself, his face to his Lord. As Allah has said in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنْ دِينًا مِمَّنْ دَعَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمَلُ الصَّالِحَانِ فَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better than the one who makes the call out to the people, invites the people. And then after he invites the people, he himself is a person who believes in that which he calls the people to. And he does righteous deeds. She does righteous deeds according to the Quran, according to the way of the Prophet, according to the Sahaba. And then they say, I am from the Muslims. I am from those who have submitted. Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala guides whomever he wills to that path. As Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentioned, sirat al mustaqim. And we say that in every raka'ah, every unit of prayer, guide us to the straight path. And this is after Allah has guided you. As the non Muslim is not obligated upon him or her to pray. Although they will be punished for not praying. So when the person says, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, we understand he has submitted. So why is he asking Allah in a very desperate way, using the command form in Arabic, which is almost like telling the individual, 
But in this case, when you're telling your Lord, it's begging. It's begging. Being so humble and low to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you command him. Guide us to the straight path. Which shows that you are in need of your Lord. You are in need of his guidance. As the Prophet said, وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَىٰ نَفْسٍ تَرَفَتْعَيْنٍ do not leave me to my own judgment. Do not leave me to my own soul. Do not leave me to my own thoughts. Do not leave me to myself. For the blink of an eye. Here the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala is making clear. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. After we have submitted. Why? Because the scholars of Islam of the past and present. Min ahl al-haq. From the people who hold to the truth. And clarify the affairs for the common folk. They have mentioned that Huda is of two types. And Huda in Arabic, it means in English guidance. Guidance, direction. Huda al Irshad, the type of guidance that is something to show you around, like a light in the night or a sign on the side of the road. Imagine a person is traveling, he doesn't have any speed limit. Doesn't have anything at the exit. He's just riding, trying to figure out with no GPS, no map, which way he thinks he needs to go. Then if he sees a sign saying 20 miles to this place, 2 miles to that place, this is one incident and one example of irshad, having direction and guidance. So the word huda, which is guidance, it has the meaning of irshad, someone to be directed. When he or she is lost. Then there's the second type of meaning that the scholars have given. It's called a tawfiqiyah. Huda tawfiqiyah. Meaning that Allah continuously guides you along the way. And this is the one that we ask for in every salat. When we say, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. We don't say just guide us. We say guide us to asrat al-mustaqeem. The straight path. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned an authentic hadith, Al-Sirat Huwa Al-Islam. That straight path is Islam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us in every salat, whether it be the five salat, whether it be the extra salat, whether it be the sunnan salat, whether it be the salat of the person who dies, janazah, whether it be the salat of Eid, whether it be the salat of Eclipse, Solar or lunar, whether it be the salat for rain because of drought, whether it be the salat of any type, ihdina sirat al mustaqim. And this is from the blessing of Allah wa ta'ala. One of the blessings that the ummah, the nation, the Muslims who have submitted to Allah, we have turned away from the guidance of Allah wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah from the blessings of His. From the blessed month of Ramadan, that guidance that we all enjoy, that guidance that we participated in, that guidance that we were reminded of in our salat and by reading Quran and by the different lessons and so forth, circles of knowledge that we carry on with that guidance. We carry on reading and seeking that guidance, asking Allah for that guidance in our journey as each one of us is on a journey back to our Lord. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in that journey. Akuli kuli hadha wa astaghfirli wa alikum wa disair muslimin li kulli zambih innuhu huwa ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Hamdan kithiran tayyiban mubarakan fih Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahduhu la sharika lah Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Thumma ama ba' After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As we should praise him because much praise to Allah is good and in it is blessings in itself. Allah tabarakul wa ta'ala as we conclude about the need for guidance. That Allah tabarakul wa ta'ala send guidance again 
to prophets and messengers who are better, more complete in human fashion and in their ways that they lived and in their obedience and their holding firm to the legislation of Allah in good times and bad times in the prophets and messengers. Who is more worthy that you follow as an individual, as a human, knowing that you will follow them and not be in error than the prophets and messengers. As Allah wa ta'ala from his guidance to them is that the guidance is so clear to them, so firmly rooted in them from receiving that type of guidance from their Lord directly that there's no way that they can disobey Allah wa ta'ala. There's no way that they can turn against the guidance and follow their desires like we do. There's no way that they can throw behind their backs as if they know not after doing. There is no way that they can call the people to worship themselves as prophets and messengers other than Allah. And this is because of the greatness of the guidance, the clarity and the guidance and the mercy from Allah wa ta'ala. This is from the absolute need as a human that you have to be guided by the one that created you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the guidance that we mentioned that's for all of the human beings. We call it common sense. That's common sense. Oh, he should know that, or everybody should know that. How does he know not know that? This is guidance from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Not just common sense, you should know it as a human law. This is guidance from Allah that He gave every individual the, the, the ability to discern between right and wrong. The, 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 the ability to look and to reflect and to soul search and to look at the creation of Allah wa Ta'ala and know from looking at that creation that Allah is who He say He is. Now Allah wa Ta'ala on top of that has showed this is the right way and this is the wrong way. By default, we know what's right and what's wrong. On top of that, Allah still sent more guidance for complex issues, more guidance for when you forget more guidance when the things become more sophisticated as in the life we live today. Disobedience is so sophisticated, it looks as if it's not disobedience. Disobedience is so rampant and so abundant, it looks like it's okay and obedience is not okay. And this is from the guidance that Allah wa Ta'ala has given us where we can discern we're still able to look if we hold to that guidance. And then the guidance that shows once you accept Islam, you're not free, you're not saved as the Christians mentioned, I am saved. La. There's a continuous struggle in that journey to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with more good deeds than bad deeds. To meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he accepts from you your worship because your worship was only for him and not to be seen or not to be praised. That your worship was not mixed with worship to him and something or someone other than Allah. These are from the benefits that we should learn out of the month of Ramadan. These are from the jewels that we mention time and time again. The early Muslims, the first generations, the first three of them that we have been commanded to hold to, they used to hope for six months after Ramadan that Allah would accept their fast. And this is not, as they say, be majority to laf. It's not by a mere statement, I hope Allah accepts. La. They were hoping by way of continuing fast on Monday and Thursday, for example. His name was Khamis, the second and fifth day of the week. They were hoping by continuing in their charity, giving as Allah wa Ta'ala said, even if it be a date stone as the Prophet mentioned, meaning something small even. They were continuing upon their reading the Quran and not just reading Quran for the sake of getting a reward. But to read the Quran and to stop and ponder upon certain areas of the Quran that's pretty clear that it's relative to everybody's life. That it's for that time, this time, and the times to come. That which we need to go over and read and say over and over again, taking a deep look at what Allah has sent and why. These were some of the things that they did in hopes that Allah would accept as this shows the sincerity of a person that he embarks upon worship in Ramadan, and that it was so sweet to him or her, they were so sincere in that for the sake of Allah, that they continue after Ramadan as if Ramadan never left. And Allah Ta'ala would not change 
of people who are like that from being high in the land, respected and revered to being humiliated, trampled and debased. As Allah mentioned in his noble book when he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغَيِّرُ بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يَغَيْرُ بِمَا أَنفُسِهِمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ And Allah will not change that which is in the people. He will not change that which is inside of a people until they themselves change what's inside of them. What does this mean? As we conclude, the Muslims of old, they had great belief in Allah because they strove to gain that belief. They had a great type of certainty about the promise of Allah because they read and believed that promise. And they lived that promise of Islam by practicing that which came to them. Implementation was a serious thing with the early Muslims. Doing that which Allah had prescribed in public and in secret was a reality for them. Avoiding the sins. Whether it be the smallest of sin was a serious fleeing for them. Lean from evil. And with that, seeking the hereafter, Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala opened up all of the dunya, all of the things of the worldly life that they needed to the point that they traveled and people would learn from the Muslims, an international institution, whether it was from the religious side connected to their Lord or that which was totally from the issue of the civil life. And the Muslims were revered and respected. And when people seen them from afar, they were happy. And they knew the security and the favor of Allah from his blessings would come with those Muslims. Today, it's the opposite. When they see the Muslims, they lock their doors. When they see the Muslims, they remember all of the lies and the true parts about the Muslims who are deviant. When they see the Muslims, they feel threatened. They feel that what's going to happen next? Is this going to be another bomb or another tragedy rather than the way that they felt about the early Muslims? And this is that which has come from out of the Muslims in these days, it comes out of their heart, comes out of their deen, comes out of their hope, comes out of their practice, that which Allah wa ta gave them of correct Islam. And this is the meaning when Allah says he will not change. And Allah emphasizes in Allah, which is indeed Allah will not change without a shadow of a doubt. Ma bi qawmen, that which is in the people of good belief, that which is in the people of good deeds, that which is in the people of honoring what the Prophet came with, that which is in the people of dignity and uprightness in the religion. And so they take that out of their own selves by loving the ways of disbelief, by loving the ways of disobedience, by having doubt in what Allah Taala mentioned, by not holding and loving that which the Messenger وسلم, left in the Sahaba. Allah Taala mentioned, while Allah at the same time He forgives much, as Allah had mentioned. If Allah was to take us to task, oh Allah don't take us to task. If Allah was to take us to task, oh Allah don't take us to task. If Allah was to take us to task, hold us accountable and give us the, 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 the earnings of our sinful deeds, there would not be a creature left on the face of the earth. For, 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 for this reason Allah has mentioned at the end of that verse, وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ and Allah forgives them for a whole lot of stuff. That's a mercy within himself. For the believers. So when you see what's happening in Palestine. When you see what's happening in Syria. When you see what's happening in Egypt. When you see what's happening all over the places. Where the Muslims live in the majority of calamity. Bloodshed. Total disrespect for the Quran. People putting their foot on the Quran and the masjid of Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala. People raping, killing innocent children and women. People annihilating the infrastructure, leaving you with nowhere to go. 
then no, it's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love the believer. No, it is not that Allah, he doesn't know. He, he, he foresaw us or left us, turned his, his grace away from us. Not, but it's that we ourselves threw away the nip of Allah. As Allah says in the other verse, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغَيْرُ بِنِعْمَةٍ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يَغَيْرُ بِمَا أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not take away the blessings. He will not take away the gifts. He will not take away what He gave them of His ni'mah until they take it and they change it, that which Allah gave them from them own selves, from their own selves. So, Ya Ayyil Muslimun, so in conclusion, O Muslims, this is a reality. We have to hold to the guidance of a tabarakul wa ta'ala. We have to know that we are in need, we cannot make it, as the Prophet mentioned, even for the twinkle of an eye, if Allah does not give us guidance. And this guidance is the salvation. This guidance is the redemption. This guidance is the way that al tabarakul wa ta'ala has given us the whole to. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us the whole to this guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to learn what is the guidance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to take the guidance away from us, not to make it from that which we take out of ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our sins and to turn us back to that which is correct. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kithira subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو استغفروه ونتوب إليه وقيموا الصلاة